Hello YouTube world. So today I'm doing a quick little live presentation with you. I just wanted to touch base with you as a community and um, you know what the live option seemed like a good idea today. So how is everyone? Have you guys have had a good week? I know I have. Um, it's the usual stuff, you know, it's busy and whatnot. But nonetheless, here we are today. Today we are going to go over the secrets to a great hem while we work on this dress. So if you're new here today, hi, my name is Cassie and you are watching Cassie Sews, the channel that is dedicated to helping you make high quality, slow fashion items all from your home sewing machine while you become an expert home sewist. So join me today as we continue to hone those skills and today what we're working on is a hem. For those of you who have been part of my community for a while, you would know that um, this girl gets busy, right? <laughs> I end up with a lot of things that I have to get done in a day and um, it ends up snowballing and sometimes it takes me a while to get to things. So if you had heard me mentioned on some of my previous videos, this dress here, this lovely little dress, do you see that? This dress belongs to my friend and um, back in the summertime, the summertime, I had accepted some hemming and mending work for her, um, you know, shortening some hems on some pants, taking some things in, readjusting them. This project was among those projects and for unknown reasons to me, this particular one just kept getting pushed to a back burner. I think I had taken a long time to pin it all up and then I sent it off to her to sign off on it. She wants it like five eighths of an inch shorter than what I had originally pinned. How can I explain? There just always seemed to be something else I was working on. So, but today we are here to make this right. By the way, I would like to acknowledge that while this is a live video, I'm running the live video from my cell phone. So if there's any comments or anything coming up, guys, Honestly, I don't see them right now, but I'll be happy to comment on them afterwards. So let's get straight to it after all that preamble. Now then, a neat thing about this dress is that this dress had a little tag in it that said it was the, I believe the Canadian Union, union Workers, um, which I had to Google it and see what that was about. And there actually be, used to be a union for sewists in Canada and this garment was made during a time era that that union was still in full force. I don't know if it is today, but it was. And um, it even had a label inside it like that. So with this dress, what you can see here, it's tiny. It's a, uh, you know, very small waist. It's very pretty, delicate little dress. Um, you can see it just zips open and zips back closed. And what we have here, for the skirt is we have these different tier layers, one, two, three, and four. And so basically, you know how sometimes you can, the length of your skirt can completely change the way it looks, right? It can, um, the wrong length skirt can make you look dowdy or old. And so the motive here behind shortening this is to bring it up to a little bit more of a modern hem length for the dress that will look more appropriate on the wearer. And so that's what we're gonna do. So now let's take a look at this and discuss. Um, there will be some visibility limitations because it's live guys, and um, I'm not practiced at these, so just go with it. But anyways, um, when we're hemming something, there are some secrets to doing a hem well. I would say probably the number one thing that you would hear be it woodworking, sewing, or all sorts of things is measure twice, cut once. I would say that the biggest secret guys when it comes to hemming something effectively is you need to measure it to death to make sure you have it straight and accurate. Now I'm going to share with you some of the tools that I like to use when I'm doing that. Um, one of the tools that I have used for years and years now is this here, the Dritz Easy Hem. Okay, this is a two-sided ruler that on one side here, we have the increments 1.6 centimeters, um, 10.2 centimeters on and on. 
and you have centimeters across here and across here. In addition to that, it does have inch increments going here. And then when you turn it over on the other side, this side is all imperial. And here's a strange thing, like even though I'm Canadian, I live in Canada and we do everything by metric. Our gas is sold in liters. We purchase all our flour and butter and everything in grams and kilograms and it's a liter of milk, uh, all that stuff. But for some reason, most people, especially my age, um, we grew up in a time that the imperial system and the metric system switched over. I was in about grade two or three. I think it was around grade three when the metric system was transitioning over in Canada. And so what's interesting is the areas that it's really become like an industry standard, such as gassing your car, everyone talks metric. But for some reason, most of us will still talk about our height and weight with the imperial measures of inches, feet, pounds, things like that. And for some reason, guys, when I sew, I'm old school. I like the imperial. I know there's 39 point, what is it? 39 and a half inches in a meter, all that sort of stuff, because it's just, I don't know, it's how I think of things. So anyways, the point is when we're going to hem, you need to use a ruler and you can literally go into whether you want to use metric or imperial system. Um, I am going to use the good old imperial. So this Dritz Easy Hem, the wonderful thing about a ruler like this, you can see it is somewhat flexible, but it is made of metal. So the wonderful thing about that is it can withstand the high heats of an iron, which means that once you have your item in place, you can fold the hem back like this and run the iron along it and nothing's going to get damaged, but you can get a crisp, sharp line for your hem. The Dritz brand has been around for a long time. I will put a link in down below at the end of the live video. You could get this off of Amazon, I'm pretty sure. Any links for these products, anything I'm using that I can find a link and share with you, I will. I don't have any um, endorsements or anything like that, but I am an Amazon affiliate, so if you use the links below and make a purchase, I would get a very small kickback from that. So thanks for that support, guys. The other ruler that I like to use are these clear rulers, and I have multiple sizes. This one here is by Arteza. Now, the Arteza brand that I have here, um, well, actually, maybe these ones are not Arteza. I have an entire set here. I did get it off of Amazon. Let me show you what we have. So, if you were to order this set of rulers off of Amazon, that is where it came from. Um, they're affordable, they're handy, and incredibly versatile. This kit comes with a large square one like this, and you can see the beauty of it is when it's clear, you have all your angle lines, you have your straight lines. It just makes it super easy to use all of this. This also came with, I've had a few spares over time here. I have a few things in here, you guys. In any event, this box came with this ruler here, like this, and it also came with, this is the, oh my goodness, don't mind me. This is like nine inches, all right? I think it's 10 inches by the time you add the half inch on either side. And then the same thing, we also have the six inch size there. So anyways, um, I do find, these are some other quilting rulers and things. We'll just put that to the side now. But the point was between the Dritz Easy Hem ruler and a clear ruler like this, it could be this one by Omnigrid, pick your, pick your type. I find them incredibly valuable between the two, you can get a super accurate hem. Now, some of the uniqueness with this dress that we are hemming today is that it is a four-tier dress, and we want to make sure that not only are we measuring up the same distance all the way around to shorten it, but we want to make sure that it hangs nicely in relation to the other tiers and appears straight there as well. So as I was describing, probably the number one secret for a great hem would be to measure very carefully, make sure everything is completely straight. The second part of the secrets of a great hem are your rulers. A metal ruler, if you can get one, and some clear plastic rulers. Guys, if all you have is a basic measuring tape like this, um, like I, I just want to acknowledge that not everyone 
is as heavily invested in their sewing supplies as I am. In fact, once I clean this up a little more, I'm going to give you guys a nice little sewing studio tour and just show you all my equipment I work with and everything like that. But suffice it to say, um, I've been married a long time and uh, pretty much from the day I moved out uh, on my own, I started working on my stash of sewing supplies. So it has taken me basically 30 years to acquire and curate all these things I have, the machines I have, um, the cutting mats, the rulers, everything. So if you're just starting out on your sewing journey, please do not feel any pressure to run out and buy everything that you see someone using. But I will say a handful of tools can change everything about your sewing experience. So if you don't have a cutting mat, at least go to the dollar store and buy yourself a small basic one. But if you can find 30 or $40 to get a better sized one, you will find it's going to help you tremendously with your sewing. Same with a rotary cutter, I would consider indispensable sewing tool. And guys, these clear rulers. This one here by OmniGrid that's 6 inches by 12 inches, this one I probably use throughout all my sewing almost more than any other ruler that I have. It's just a really versatile size and I like it. So when it comes to your hemming, you want to measure and you need some good quality rulers. Worst case, if you are doing it with just a tape measure, it can be done. It's just going to take you a little longer and you need to going to need to go a little bit slower to achieve the same result, but not a problem. You can do it. Other than that, what do we need to finish a hem? We would need um, pins, right? We need a needle. We need thread, probably going to need a thimble. And um, if necessary, you can use something like stitch witchery to fuse your folded hem up if it's a really difficult hem to work with. This is a pretty stiff fabric, like it's not like chiffon or something, you know what I mean? I don't think we're going to need something like that with this. But then once we have our hem done, we are going to put some seam binding around it to finish it off really nice. So without any further ado, there's an explanation of the supplies you need. You need the garment, you need rulers, you need pen, pins, needles, thread, scissors or blades of some sort if necessary stitch witchery and optional is seam binding to finish it at the end that's entirely up to you so there's also two different ways to sew a hem once you have your hem cut and pinned you could just run it on a sewing machine there's two different ways to sew it on a sewing machine one of them would be to have just straight stitching much like you would see on your jeans hem, for example, of your pants, you can visibly see the hemline stitch around the bottom of the pant leg. Not a problem. This is standard industry practice. It's done lots. But then, as you know, certain dresses and um, dress pants, things like that, will often have what looks like an invisible hem. And there's two ways to achieve that. You can either hand stitch it or you can blind hem it on a machine. Um, that's a whole different setting. We're not doing that today. We're just going to hand hem this because that's what I know I can do really well, right? I will be honest guys, I have never really played with the blind hem option on my machines. That's something we're going to do together in this next year as we continue to hone our skills and master our skills as home sewists. Okay, so now what we have here is we do have this um, dress here and you can see that it was already, let me just unpin a little for you. This was this long before, like it was significantly longer um, with a little kick pleat at the back. I had already pinned and stitched it up this high and then my friend, as I described, wants it shortened just another five eighths of an inch. So when you're looking to hem something, you might be asking yourself, how am I going to go about doing this? So the first thing you need to determine is your finished length. Once you can measure your finished length out, then the next thing you're going to be doing is measuring out how much seam allowance you need. You need however deep you want your hem to be. I think most hems are about one and a quarter inch um, in terms of the depth that you see away from the bottom fold of the pant leg or the skirt. Um, so usually one and a quarter inch is a fairly standard um, depth or height that you would have. So then, but then you're going to need another quarter inch for folding under so that you don't have any fraying edges. Therefore, what you need to do is we're going to measure, for example, 
from this tier here, how far down we need to go. This is almost a perfect four inches. We're gonna get it right, don't worry. But then if we're adding another one and a quarter inch, then what that means is the amount of fabric we're actually gonna unfold and cut here would be that one and a quarter inch longer so that once you fold it and press it, you will have the finished hem length that you want. Okay, so we're gonna get started with this now. I'm just gonna take a sip, one moment. Okay. <laughs> That's awkward drinking on camera, isn't it? <laughs> Anyways, all right, let's try that again. So I have this here, let's measure it out. I'm going to take the ruler that I do enjoy so much, the big, long ruler here. I'm gonna push this stuff out of the way. And I'm just going to measure, let me see here first. We're gonna to want to, just lay that out so that we can see exactly where everything is settled to. Now, I do know that the last time I had pressed and measured this, guys, I was like ferocious with this thing. It took me so long to get it straight the first time. So here's what I know. I'm confident that my first line was straight. We could just bring up the five eighths of an inch from there. And let me just show you here. You can see where my friend pinned this to, right? And if we just take a ruler, like so, and we pin it, push it along the edge. Do you see that uh, there's this yellow line here? Do you see that yellow, the top of that yellow line there? That is a half inch and it does literally go that one tick past that to five eighths of an inch, right? So that's what we're gonna measure out here. So here's what we do. We're gonna measure down from the fold and let's just see how far we have to go here. So what I had initially measured out, how did we do this? That from the stitch, hang on a minute, look at this. This might be a better bet here. I have to try and remember what I did back in the summer when I first started working on this thing, right? It's pretty crazy. So that's stitched down at the bottom. We can't move the back piece any further, but let's just measure here what I had. Oops, sorry guys. So when we measure down here from the top like this, this is six and a quarter inches. Yep, six and a quarter. Okay, less six. Yikes. Okay, let's check back here. Yeah, it's pretty consistent, six and a quarter all the way around. And we are wanting to shorten this by literally five eighths of an inch. So if you were doing this from the very start, we're gonna take out all these extra pins that I had put in here previously, but I'm gonna leave the ones where my friend pinned it first in place. We're just gonna pull out all these pins that I had done before. And see, the nice thing is once we have this pinned up, this is something you can sit there with your family at night and watch TV and just hand hem it. You might be looking at the dress a little more than the TV, but the nice thing is you can hang out with your family and still do something productive at the same time. So that's going to be really great. Okay, now then, where my friend had folded this back, I'm just going to take another measurement here. And that is... Five and three eighths of an inch. I'm just going to measure one, two, three. That would be <laughs> okay. Let me just measure this one more time back here. See what we got to deal with. You know, it really is five eighths of an inch from what I had pinned up last time. So we're going to unpin these bits here, and I'll show you what we have. Okay. Let's just unfold the whole thing and I'll show you what I had been working on. Sorry guys, I'm not practice, practiced at live videos. I've only done them a couple of times, so hopefully this is gonna be okay. And if it's terrible, I don't have to leave it up, right? Anyways, 
Here's the length of the dress as you can see it originally was designed. And at the back, you can see that kick pleat. You can see the, the pressing line where I had measured this up to shorten it before. Now, if you were doing this from scratch at home, you didn't have a pre-measured line like I did because you hadn't already been working on it. Let's say you're hemming this from the beginning. What you would need to do, as you see here, I've already picked out the hem. Most times when we're hemming something, it ends up that in order to have enough of this seam allowance to, um, you know, turn it under again, we end up needing some of that seam allowance in the hem. So unless there's like a huge amount to cut off, you usually have to unpick your first hem before you can make the second hem. But if you're chopping off three or four inches of the pant or skirt, then of course you don't need to unpick the hem because you're cutting all of it away and it's just going to become scraps, right? So in this instance, we would have been able to do that, but it does look like the hem was already picked out. So once you have your hem picked out, the next thing that you're going to want to do, you do need to remember that when you're hemming a garment, um, chances are the garment did start off um, cut quite straight and correct from when it was made in whatever factory it was sewn in, right? So you can usually measure up from the bottom quite accurately, but you're going to need to double check. So in this instance here, you guys can see that I did have this all laid out. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to fold my ironing back up because I think that was helpful before. And from here, you know what we're going to do is I am going to take a chalk, a simple basic tailor's chalk, like so, okay? And I'm going to measure, actually I'm going to turn it righty and lefty, right? I like to work from this side. Okay. So now that we have this here like this, the next thing that I'm going to do is simply measure up that five eighths of an inch that we're going to take off. So I'm just going to put this onto here. I do not have my reading glasses here. You're going to have to bear with me. I'm not going upstairs during a live. So with your ruler, this first yellow line is like a quarter inch. That second yellow line is a half an inch. Five eighths of an inch is one tick, if you will, past that. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to lay this down on whatever end of fabric you had. If you had picked the whole thing out and you were hemming a pair of pants or skirt, you're going to pull this whole thing out like this and you're going to lay it out like this. Okay. And you're going to measure up from the bottom exactly how far you need that thing to go. Now in this instance here, because I had pre-measured something, I don't necessarily have to go, oh, okay, I've got to, you know, go up here like this and take off, you know, hmm, would be up to there. And then you're sort of like one and a quarter. I'd be taking off five and a quarter inches is probably what I'm going to end up cutting off. So this is how you would do it. You would pick your fabric, open your hem. You're going to determine the length you need, and then you're going to measure, cut, press, fold, press, and then stitch. Because in this instance, as I was describing to you, I did pre-measure this. I'm just going to do some checking here on this. Let's see. Incidentally, this is why some parts of sewing can take like a tremendous amount of time to do well and to do accurately is, um, out of the way. It takes a lot of fussing, right? You have to fuss and fiddle. Mm, the coffee. Okay, now then. So we have this laid out here. And I'm just going to check the consistency of my fold line, first of all. Six and a half. Yep. I'm just going by my ironing fold line here, guys, and just testing out. My work was straight. Good, good, good. So you see, I'm just going along everywhere I pressed. Everything is like, this is spot on what I did, guys. It was a perfect 
six and a half inches up from the very bottom of the fabric to the pressing line that I had done. So the good news about that is you know that if you've measured something straight, your finished result is going to be straight as well. I wish there was a way to help you see this a bit more, but I guess this is kind of like what a live video is going to be about. Okay, this is definitely straight. So from here, if you recall, I did describe to you what we need to do is shorten this by five eighths of an inch. So I'm just going to lay the ruler across here. I'm going to find my half inch mark and then that one extra line passed for the five eighths of an inch. And then we're going to position it all. Do, 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 do. One, two, three, four, five. Oh my gosh, it's going to be a little harder than that. Oops. All right, we're going to have to go very slow on this. Here we go. This is what we're going to have to do. It's really difficult to see where that fold line is. So I'm going to fold it back up in here like this to make it a little bit easier to see where that end is. Yes, this will be better. So now, now I take this and I'm just going to mark out with my chalk. This is a wax style chalk. Um, once again, the chalk that I'm using, these wax style chalks, I will put a link below so that you can purchase the same or similar product. Um, these wax style chalks are heat erasable chalks that um, when you touch it to an iron or something, it will generally disappear. Now, Something to understand when you're working with a chalk like this, because this is not a classic um, dusty chalk, right? It's almost like a little wax chalk. So you don't want to go too heavy and hard with this because it is possible to stain your fabrics because at the end of the day, there's wax in here, right? So we don't want a big, huge, thick line because what if when the heat hits it, we don't want it to stain. So what we're going to do, you're just going to lay this down and we're just going to make some small marks here that we can keep track of. There's one. And I'm sorry guys, this part is definitely not very exciting to watch for the rest of you. There's not much we can do about that part at this moment. And now that I'm doing that, you know what else I'm going to do guys? Because the even my chalk marks, they're not the easiest to see but as I described to you I don't actually want to um, I don't want to make it uh, I don't want to stain it right it's not my dress we do need to be careful so here's what I'm doing is everywhere that I put my little wax mark I'm just putting a pin as well just makes it easier to see it and then you'll see once we have this then we can press that line and then we can go and measure out the hem length that we're gonna cut. It won't be that bad, it won't take that long. And then as I described to you, once you have this done, then you can be watching TV with your family, having a nice quality night and getting something accomplished at the same time. What's not to like about that? Once again, we'll just add a couple more pins. Just do a little more for you guys. Try and think of something to talk about while we're doing all this work together as well. You know, guys, when you hem things like this, you can save yourself a lot of money as well. Um, I think it, it costs you around $20 to $30, $25, $30 nowadays to get a hem done at a retail shop location um, simply because it takes good honest time for people to do things and get them done and so you do have to pay someone for their skills and expertise this is where if you learn how to do something like a hem at home you could do very well for yourself and save a lot of money and also hem something to exactly the length you want you can make it look as attractive as you want the whole bit right there's a lot of control with being able to do it yourself at home so I would highly recommend all right now 
one more little marking here. So there's that bit. Now we have to turn around and do the same thing on the other side. There goes one of my pins. Oh, well. So for this one now, I'm just going to, what I've pinned, I'm moving it out of the way underneath so that I can continue to pin out this hem. And I'm sorry, guys, i got to go get my reading glasses next time I do something like this. Or one day I'll just go get eye surgery, but not there yet. Maybe one day. I have to not be afraid of it. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, so now we have, we're pinning here, here, and here. Just a little further. This is the hard part of this. I will say, guys, um, gosh, I hope this video is not too boring. This is the hard part of doing something like this hem is um, it just is time consuming. You have to put in the time and the effort. And if you want a good quality, straight, even project when you're done, this is the stuff that takes the time that you might go, why is it taking so long to do this? Because, well, good honest work takes good honest time to do, doesn't it? So, uh, yeah. If you just take the time, put in the time and effort, you're going to have a beautiful project when you're done. And the whole point, I think, when we sew at home, you want to feel proud of what you've done, right? You want to feel good in what you wear. None of us wants to make clothes that look campy, if you will, right? We don't want to finish our sewing projects and, and someone's like, oh, that's nice. You tried, right? You want people to like what you've done. And so therefore you have to put in the time and effort to do it right. Finishing things like hems, um, if they are not done correctly, it's like a crooked picture on the wall. It's all you can see, right? Okay, so now here we've made some good progress on our pinning. And here. And here. So now you can see what I've done is I've gone all the way around the dress and I've pinned it. I can even bring it a little closer to show you. Can you see that? I think so, yeah. All right, so you can see um, it's all pinned up. So the next thing that we're going to do is I'm actually going to take this, I'm gonna plug in my iron. Uh -huh. I'll come back over here so you can see me. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in the iron and get the iron warmed up. We're gonna like press that and then we can measure and cut the back end. Once we've had that done, you just press your hem in and you're ready for your hand stitching. So I'm gonna turn on the iron. Just give me a moment here. All right then, so now we're just gonna give the iron a couple of minutes to heat up. So while we're waiting for the iron to heat up, um, we could talk about, what are we gonna talk about? Oh gosh, you know what guys, I feel a little awkward. <laughs> I thought I had my life all planned out and I think I didn't see this part coming with the ironing and the pressing, right? So what I can do while we're waiting for the iron to heat up is in order to press this, why don't we, gee, now that I have that that far, now we're thinking, I'm going to unpin that and I'm going to fold this where my wax lines are like this, like so. Okay, and once you have it right on the wax line that you folded, you're going to want to pin as close to that as possible because then we're going to be able to make sure that this is entirely straight before we go the rest of the way with the project. So you just want to keep working this out. You'll be able to see your own little wax chalk lines or whichever lines you've made on your garment, just like this. Okay, and while I'm working on this, why don't we talk a little bit about 
what are you guys going to do? What do you guys have planned um, for your sewing projects this year? Are you mostly looking at doing clothing things or are you looking at doing stuff um, more in the crafting area? As you know, I do. No, it's okay. Yep. As you know, I definitely dabble in all areas. I've got my Luna Lap and Friends series that we're definitely going to go back around and finish Reynard Fox. Um, I do have that friend that I'm working on some of the um, puppets and stuff for that I've been converting. I'm actually meeting up with that friend again this afternoon. We're going to be doing more things. So some of those other parts I might share with you, but I don't know if I'll show you the finished thing entirely until my friend's channel goes live, right? But in any event, um, definitely throughout this year, I'm going to be doing both clothing and crafty things. I do have a nice bib quilt that I started, oh goodness, a couple of years ago. And it just keeps getting shelved by other things that seem to be clamoring for my attention. So part of my plan this year is definitely to circle around and finish that. Even if it means that like once a week, I might do that. Like what if once a week on a Sunday, we sit down and quilt together. We can have a little sewing bee. And I don't know, guys, we'll see. In any event, here's what you want to just keep doing is keep working that hem around like so. Almost there. Or that's what I tell myself. I don't think I'm almost there, am I? I think I'm only halfway done this thing. So when you've got your hem working around like this, just going to keep repositioning your pins in such a way. So what I've done is, remember guys, what I did is first I measured out the 5 eighths of an inch that I'm shortening this by since the original markings, which is kind of how this project got um, delayed, was, I don't know, threw me off somehow. And I just kept saying, oh, we'll do it soon. Until now I'm to the point of saying, okay, before my friend starts asking for the dress back, I really need to get this thing finished. Plus, it's just not fair for her, right? It was kind of disrespectful that this sat for that long. I certainly did not have that intention. This is one of those anomalies that I'm left going, I'm not even sure what made such a delay, but there was. But at least we're making it right now. And there we go. I've made it all the way around. So now that we have this pinned up like so, before I press this into place, I'm just going to check with my ruler again. So remember when I told you that when it comes to doing a, the secrets to a good hem, measure twice, cut once. Press as you go. Just like any other sewing project, press as you go. If you are satisfied with your hem enough that you believe it's straight, you can go ahead and press that into place. And then it pretty much holds itself in place while you're doing the hemming, unless it's like a super slippery fabric. So we have this here laid out. And I'm just going to double check the length on these things here. I take my clear ruler that I do like so much and use so much. Put these things out of the way here. And so the first thing I'm doing is I'm just checking with my ruler the distance from this tier where it naturally is hanging or ending to the bottom. That is a clean four inches. Still four inches. Not quite there. Really close and back to four inches. So that we're going to have to stand the dress up and see if that even is going to be a factor. Let's check the back. Once again, one, two, three, four inches. Spot on, guys. It's straight. So the time I had put in before, now this 
dip slightly. But before I go crazy about any of this, because that all goes back to perfect four inches. So now, I'm going to get the hanger I had for this dress. I'm going to put it on the hanger. Do I have anything I can hang this from so I can show you guys? How about a little wall? <laughs> I feel like such a geek right now. Okay, so now with the dress hanging up, I'm not going to fight gravity. That just wants to drop down like that. But what we can do now, take your same ruler and check it again. Check it again. Check it again. So from there, it is four inches. One, two, three. Right. Yep, yep. Yep. And we'll keep checking. So honestly, the front is good. Let's try the back of this and see what we get. Isn't that a pretty little dress? Like, it's just so unique with the, the just a soft brown um, color with just so neutral and classy, right? Like the browns and the all these tans and browns, they can really elevate a look and make things look very elegant, I find. So it's a super versatile, timeless color. And then all the pretty little tears give this dress so much texture, right? So now let's just check the back of it again. So down here again. Yep, it's four inches. Yep. It is straight where all my pins are. So here's the thing. You guys might be looking at this going, how did she do that? She just like sat down and pinned something and it was perfectly straight the first time. That's not true. Okay. That is not true because the first time that I worked on this thing, you don't even want to know how many hours it took me to get that thing that straight. Okay. Because I don't want to tell my friend how many hours it took me to get that that straight either. It was several hours of going back and forth, pinning, fussing, pinning, fussing, and it just, because you're measuring against these tiers on the dress, it ended up being a really challenging hem to pin out, but I did get it straight that first time, which is why now what I had pinned up here, we're just gonna go over to the iron and press it. Let's see if I can move the, uh... let's see if I can move this for you. And, all right, my cell phone says I got 20% battery left, so this is not going great here. First time trying to do a live, this is what we got going on. But anyways, oh, my lighting, I have my ironing board here. It doesn't look real great lighting because of, anyways, here we go. So you want to take your iron that you have preheated, okay? And the first thing you're going to do is you're just going to press out the hem, get your steam going, and you just want to make that hem lay down exactly where you pinned it. Like so. And then go a little further. Like this. more. Oops. So you can hear what I'm doing is I'm using, ah, I'm using the steam of the iron to set the new crease in place. Just like this. All right. I'm not pushing real hard against all the pins because all I'm trying to do here 
is set that hem fold. All right, so now we've gone around, let's put our camera back over here like this. I really don't know how much camera life we have left because it was 20% battery, guys, but if it cuts off, it does. If it dies, I'll do the rest for you by video, I suppose. Okay, so now we have this this far, right? We have repinned the hem and there it is, okay? All pinned up. Once again, you can double check it. It is still good, it is still straight. So now from here, remember I said once you get your hem pinned, then you can measure your one and a quarter inch. So basically you need to measure one and a half inches longer than where you folded. Why? Because you're gonna fold it over one quarter of an inch of your hemline to fold the fabric away so you don't have any frayed end ends that you know could unravel. And then the other one and a quarter is your hem depth. So from here, we're going to actually take out all the pins that we had going on here like this. Okay. Once you have all your pins pulled out, you can unfold the dress again. Now you see we have a new press line and the old one is pressed out. So from here, literally all that we need to do. Oh, look, I want to show you. Look at this. Let me see if I can make sure you can see it on the camera. Do you see this? Look at that. Look at that. That is that union workers label I was talking about. Can you see it? Isn't that kind of cool? Pretty neat, eh? So it's a little bit of a vintage historical dress. It's even got that union workers label in it. So I think it's just really neat. So anyways, from here, always what this girl does is I always like my project to the right so I can cut just because I'm right handed. So I like my rotary cutter in my right hand. From here, as I was describing to you, the next thing that we need to do is measure out that one and a half inch. Now with this, you can use your chalk as freely as you want because this is not going to be where anyone can see it. Okay, so from here, I'm just gonna fold it up and double check one more time. This is what we do. You measure once, measure twice, three times, four times, however many times it takes and cut once. So we're just putting it back one more time. I'm just double checking. Mm -hmm. It is straight. I don't know why I'm second guessing myself. Okay, here we go. So now, not cutting this marking we just flip it the other way and then from here ah I know how I'm gonna do this so the lines are really hard to see on this dress because of the little brown print right if it was a straight solid fabric it might be a little bit easier to see exactly where that fold line was but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mark up measure up and mark up these lines this way so remember on your ruler you have the one inch line and then each of these yellow lines like this that's like a quarter inch a half inch three quarters inch onto the next inch so we are going to measure one and a half inches because we're going to have one and a quarter inch hem depth when we're done so all that we're doing here is you kind of i like to stand up for some of these parts and again i'm a righty i gotta i gotta flip my work to whatever i can reach so here we go. So now we got this, like so. And you lay this down one and a half inches. This is where the clear rulers 
can be so fantastic, guys, because as you can see, you can mark out something nice and accurate. You can make a nice bold line that you can see because once again, this is going to be inside the dress garment, this chalk line, like you're not going to see it in the general public, like for the public eye to view ever. So you don't really have to worry about will this wax melt because the majority of it is going to get chopped away when you cut the hem and then the remainder of it is going to get ironed away with the heat. If there is anything that could possibly stain the fabric, once again, it's going to be folded inside that hemline where you can't see it. So don't worry about it. You're fine. All right. Are we having fun yet? <laughs> I might try and do a different sort of live next time. I don't know, guys. You'll have to let me know if this was any good to you or useful for you at all. Because, sure, I want to do a YouTube video and I want to connect with people and I want to do co cool sewing projects. But I want them to be, you know, helpful to you as well. So if it's useless to you, then we'll have to readjust, right? So once again, measuring out. Make sure your fabric edge is where you can see exactly the edge of your fabric garment like so things are ooh I measured one and three quarter there I'm gonna have to fix that hold on mm -hmm. it's just this area along here I think I got a little carried away that's one and yeah Hold on here. What have I done? That's one and a half. It's along here that I strayed from the proverbial text, if you will. So even though, guys, I know it's not a very fast-moving video to do a live video where I'm measuring out a hem and talking to you about it, but I also thought maybe maybe it's handy for you to see, you know, some of this work in action, see how long things can really take. Because I don't know if you're like me, sometimes when I'm done, I, I end up going like, why did that take me so long? Um, well, it is different to hem something that's already sewn than to cut something to the desired length as a pattern would have you do and then hem it at the end. Like this is more challenging when it's a finished garment already. So if it takes you a long time, like it does with me, don't feel bad about it. The important part is that you do good work and do straight work. All right, now, can you see, let's check my battery here. Um, yep, okay, it's still running. We still have camera. So can you see here now the chalk line? Right, so here, remember, this is our pressed line. That's the finished hemline. And then do you see the chalk line is what we're gonna cut. Once we cut that, we press it and we're ready to stitch. Okay, now then. <sighs> I would love to be able to lay this and just, oh my goodness, do I or don't I? Do I or don't I? That's what makes me nervous. If I do that, if you're in doubt, you can put a pin through your chalk line like this and see where it comes out on the other side. Yep. So if I have this perfectly lined up straight like this and I cut along here and push my pin through, look at that. It's on the chalk line. That means the measuring was straight, right? Once again, put it on the chalk line. Yes. So my pinning, my marking is very straight. It's hard to believe looking at this video, I'm sure. But nonetheless, here we go. So I'm going to lay this out. I am aligning the bottoms of this dress perfectly straight like this. I see my doggies getting restless down there too, eh? And I'm just going to want to line that little guy up too. I'm not going to attempt to cut this in one fell swoop. You could use your um, 
tailor scissors to cut this if you wanted to. Personally, I, I tend to use my dressmaker shears or my tailor scissors when I'm cutting out patterns. And there's something about something like this that um, the straight edge that I, the super straight that I know I can get with a ruler and a rotary cutter is very useful to me at a project like this. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm just lining this up as straight as possible here. And I am just going to do this much. And then once again, slide this along here to there. And once again, There we have this cut. Now when I look on the other side, it isn't quite like that. Man, all right, before I go cut crazy, we're just gonna check, because if this is straight otherwise, which I think it is, I'm gonna measure. Once again, let's just measure, what do we got here? Past our fold, what do we have? Yeah, it's still one and a half there. Yeah, some of that is a little longer there. All right guys, so with this one, I am gonna actually just Get my sewing scissors out. So the scissors that I'm using, I would like to share this with you as well. I have two pairs of these. These are from the Love, Dedication, and Happiness um, Scissors Company. And uh, I have both the 10 inch and the 8 inch scissors, as well as the thread snips. Thank you, mom. These were gifts from my mom. Okay. And uh, we have the 10 inch shears in the midnight uh, edition and then we also have the eight inch shears so the eight inch shears will give you a little bit more control perhaps so because the attempt even though this cut basically straight with the fold of the hem it didn't totally settle out where we wanted so to ensure that we're not going to make a cutting mistake by running that rotary cutter over it a second time we're going to use the dressmaking shears or the tailor scissors Gonna get this and I'm just cutting along that chalk line there, like so. Here we go. And you just wanna go super slow. Take your time because as you know with fabrics, once you cut it, you can't put that back, right? So you're just gonna wanna really take your time with this part. Be very careful with your cutting. As described, measure everything. Make sure it's super straight before you do anything else and you want to make sure your fabrics underneath are out of the way as much as possible so that we don't make a mistake especially when it's your friend's clothes right um, yeah bear with me guys this won't take much longer and hopefully my phone will hang on so i can get you to the point that this is pressed and ready to pin I think what I'm gonna do is show you a little in case that battery dies, you're gonna see where we're going with this. And then on the next video that I post, I will be able to show you the finished result, promise. I can do that for you. Almost there, almost there. Sorry, there's nothing fun and exciting about watching this part, is there now? So now we're getting over to where it's starting to line up with what I had cut around the back. So, ta -da. 
made a slight wobble there. That's okay. It's going to get folded in. It will be fine. Now we'll just check around the other side. Oh, we got a little bit of lining here. And then same thing here around this back here. There's only a slightest bit that needs to be trimmed to straighten this out. And I'm just following my chalk lines, guys. I'm trusting my measuring and my work that I've already done. That's what's happening here. And there's our hem, um, I mean the lining coming down as well. Okay. Now that we have this trimmed to that little chalk line all the way around, just gonna smooth out this piece of lining here. There, okay. Now we are ready to pin it. So if you recall what I had told you, we are pinning up this hem one and a quarter inch after we press this. So what you're gonna do, we're gonna go back over to the ironing board. First thing is you're gonna just turn this down a quarter inch like this and press it all the way around. Once you have that pressed, then you're going to be able to fold and press and pin like that so that you're ready for your hand hemming. So as long as we have battery left here, guys, this is what I'm gonna do. I'll move the camera over. All right, watch out, Sky Sky. Watch out, baby Sky. My doggy. Let me see what I can do for you here, guys. Hang on. Oh, the thrills of live video. Ha, ha, ha. There we go. And I can't believe it. We actually still have, um, we actually still have the camera running. This is incredible. All right, now turn my lighting so we can see here. So now we have measured this dress. We have pressed the finished hem end and we have cut it. So we're into that final stage. Now, remember I told you about the Dritz Easy Hem. I will have the links below for the products I use in the video as much as possible, guys. And once again, if you purchase something off Amazon, I will get a very small kickback. The support for the channel is greatly appreciated. But from here now, what you want to do, do you see here that um, we even do have a one quarter inch line and you've got it on the straight side and a slight curve. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to tuck this under can you see what I'm doing, I hope? Yep, I think so. Move over as close to the camera as I can. Maybe that's a bad idea. All right. So you're going to just take this quarter inch, fold it back like so. You see that? And then you're going to take your iron, press it, add a bit of steam, and pull it up. And look, you see that? You now have that one quarter inch pressed. Now, I'll be honest, guys, sometimes I'll measure like that and other times I will sort of eyeball it. I think most of us as sewists do. Um, in an instance like this, I can see that I think I did slightly cut that crooked at the back center here. So we're going to let this little piece have a slightly deeper fold right there. If I have to fix it, I will, but I'm pretty sure I got that straight. And the reason why is then if we measure our finished hem piece here, uh, it's basically one and a quarter, one and a quarter. It's as if I measured it, right? Haha, <laughs> this is great. So before I pin it all down, guys, I am just going to go all the way around. Let's pin, let's press out a quarter inch all the way around. And I do have a little straight piece going on here once again with the lining. Let's just trim that out, right? Remember I always tell you guys, be a neat sewist. Be neat and tidy about your work and you will feel so much better about it, I promise you. It's worth the trouble and the effort to turn out good quality, neat, tidy sewing projects. Definitely worth it. Incidentally, this iron I'm using is um, 
a gravity fed steam iron that I will do a product review for you guys sometimes and show you again that that's just a piece of equipment that I'm working with that I have found quite useful and helpful and maybe you would too. So just in case the camera dies, here's what I'm going to do actually. Once you have your quarter inch pressed under like that, you're going to want to be able to move this into a, a folded position and you're going to be pinning it down. And from here, you're going to be ready for that hand hem. And if you want to see your measurements, this is where the clear ruler comes in handy. And look at that. This is not quite one and a quarter there. I'm going to have to fix that. One and a quarter. One and a quarter. You get the idea here, right? So you're just going to want to go all the way around. And we already know that the fold that we did on this skirt was straight, right? So whatever happens inside of here, if this is, we just got to make sure we don't change that finished fold, but inside of there, we want this as straight as possible and we are going to blind hem it. All right. So I'm going to keep pinning, pinning it, but in case the camera dies, because as I described to you, it did say 20 seconds or less. Um, just in case it does die off guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to my first live video in probably six months to a year. It's been a really long time since I tried a live video again. And uh, I don't know if this one ended up awkward or not, but hopefully you can see where the time goes when we sew. You can see the ways to measure and pin and prepare a hem correctly so that it will be straight. And I can't wait to show you the finished project. So guys, I think because I know the battery is almost dead, I'm gonna sign it off here. And then I'll just post a little bit of follow-up footage um, on another video because I know there's not going to be enough time on that camera to get this where we need it to be So I will post you a posted video showing the finished skirt a little bit later or it'll be a two minute short All right, so listen guys. Thanks so much for tuning in today and watching Cassie sews and um, Why am I leaning down right? <laughs> thanks. Let me see what the <laughs> So anyways once again Thanks everyone for tuning in and watching my live video today and learning the secrets to a good hem. Don't forget those secrets are you need rulers to measure with. You need to measure everything very, very carefully and make sure it's completely straight before you cut it. Next step, you want to press your finished um, hemline, like the bottom finished hemline where you want it to end before you cut or sew anything so that you can Put it on even and make sure you're completely satisfied with that length. Once you have that, you're going to measure out however deep your hem inside the garment will be and you're going to press that into place and then you either machine step, stitch it, blind hem stitch it on machine or hand sew it. Those are the secrets to a good hem that will lay down straight and serve you well every time. So thanks again for tuning in today and watching Cassie Sews. I'll see you next time with your needle and thread. Take care, guys. Bye. Oh, this is still playing. I'm trying to stop it. Sorry, guys. Ah, how do I stop it? Oh, no. I'm not even joking. I don't know how to stop this thing. Okay, this is so awkward. Um, ah, sure. Oh gosh, I don't know how to stop this. Why? What's happening? I'm going to try just exiting out. No, I don't know if I could do that. Can I? So there we go. Are you sure you want to stop?